This is Quokka, a Visual Studio Code extension that executes your JavaScript code live. And I'm about to replicate it, but for Python. Visual Studio Code is the most widely used text editor out there, and it's got quite the market share, as you can tell. There are currently 64,324 extensions out there. And I've personally been using Visual Studio Code and their extensions ever since I learned how to code. And I've never really thought about ideas for extensions myself or didn't really think about building them until I saw Quokka.js and I just thought this would be really cool if it existed for Python. So then I started thinking, well, could I build my own extension? So I thought it'd be interesting to answer the question of how hard is it to build one? So in this video, you'll see me go from zero to hopefully a fully functioning Python VS Code extension. So straight away, I just had so many questions and so few answers. How, how do you start? What language is used? And what can you do with VS Code extensions? Like what's possible? Turns out a lot. So let's peek behind the curtains of VS Code. So getting started is not that difficult. Uh, in fact, it's literally just two commands in your command line of choice. Before you can do that, you have to have Node.js installed and of course, Visual Studio Code. But other than that, it's literally just two commands. And all of this is explained in the documentation that I read. Yes, I read documentation in the era of ChatGPT. Not only that, but I read it on my Kindle. So I'm going to start just reading through some of those examples. Uh, not actually because I want to learn it or I think that I'm going to learn it by reading it. I think I'm going to learn it by actually doing it, but I want to just have read through it so that I've seen the things before I start working on it. That way I think I can also avoid some things that might take time. So this might not be the most efficient way to do it. The most efficient way would probably be to just start, but I also want to learn a lot about this. So uh, I want to just prep my mind before I start actually coding. So I'm going to spend just 30 or 40 minutes reading through some of those examples and trying to prep my brain for this. Now, did it help? Not really. Uh, I learned that the language that's used is TypeScript. Okay, so now I've read uh, a little bit and uh, I feel like I understand nothing. No, but I, at least I've seen some of the terms and I think I understand maybe where I should start looking uh, in order to try to build this extension. So now I guess we'll just get started. I'm going to do just a uh, the base project or the test project first and just get my hands kind of into it and um, see what it's like actually building any sort of extension with this. I haven't used TypeScript or JavaScript barely ever so uh, it'll be very interesting trying to uh, build an entire extension using that language. But it's also a good kind of showcase to show that like it doesn't really matter what language you choose in the beginning when you're trying to learn to code because once you know one, you can basically use any of them. So um, yeah, let's just start. So now what? I have this basic program or extension, but it really doesn't do anything that I want. Like none of this code is useful to me. So let's break this down. What am I actually trying to build here? So here's the idea. As you type out Python code, the program should evaluate it and produce or show the output of the line that you are working on next to the cursor. And that's my natural language way of explaining the idea of what I'm doing. And once I've got that written down, we can start breaking this down further and figure out what are the literal steps that the program will need to take in order to achieve this. So the first thing is we need to produce text to the right of the cursor. 
we need to run Python code inside TypeScript. We also need to know what code to run and what code not to run because we don't want to run an entire script just to show that like the output of a simple print statement is hello world or something. If like me, you have lots of different ideas for projects that you want to build and tend to just end up juggling multiple things at once, or you just want a more streamlined way to manage your tasks, then my sponsor ClickUp is worth checking out. So ClickUp is an all-in-one productivity platform that's designed to help you stay on top of everything, whether that's work, personal projects, or just managing life in general. What I love about ClickUp is how customizable it is. It allows you to create your own system for organization, whether that's using boards, timelines, templates, or just a simple checklist. And personally, I'm really a fan of the KISS principle. So keep it simple, stupid. And this is where I think ClickUp really shines because it allows me to create my version of a simple system. So especially using their features like their automation tools, it allows me to create complex automation that support my simple system. So I can keep the system simple, but I can have complex automations, if that makes sense. For example, I can set an automation to apply a certain template and fill in certain fields. As soon as I apply the label of, let's say, video to a certain task, it's flexible and it integrates with all of your favorite apps. So you won't have to jump between different platforms when you're using it. So if you're looking for a beautiful solution to staying on top of your tasks, then go to tryclickup.com slash Cal and try it out. It's completely free, so just go try it out. And thank you to ClickUp for sponsoring this video. We're gonna start out with just figuring out, can I print Hello World next to the cursor in non-editable text? So it turns out that the way that you can do this is with text decoration. So now we can see that we have a program that can show some sort of text to the right of the cursor. Now this wasn't that hard, but it also makes sense that it wasn't that hard because this was just really a fancy type of print statement. So the main challenge is actually what comes next. How do you run code in another language using code? And this really is the main challenge, I believe, because this is the entire program. If we can't run Python code, then this whole thing falls apart. So like I said, this was a little bit harder than I thought. So I spent a solid day working on this, chat GPTing and co-piloting my way forward. It turns out, as per usual, that my approach of, well, how hard could it be? It's, it's actually pretty hard. All right, I think we have something here. Um, let me run it again. And let's see what happens. It does print the test thing. Uh, so print uh, total days. And it prints the total days. That's actually really good. Now, it's not perfect. It doesn't really run super smoothly, but sometimes it seems like it works. So the answer to the question of, well, how do you run code inside code? Like how do you run Python code in TypeScript? Is actually through TypeScript's function called exec, which actually allows you to execute shell commands within TypeScript. And so that means that you can run Python scripts through the shell command and get the output and use that in whatever way you want in TypeScript. And that's really great, but it's only half the battle. The other half of the battle is actually figuring out how do we select what to run and what not to run. So my kind of crude way of solving this was that I just created a loop that goes through every line above the cursor, keep going up until I hit something that looks like a function or a class. And if I hit something like that, then I break and I just use the code that's within the function or the class. That kind of works, but it also means that we if we have any sort of like global variables or things like that that's used within the method or within the class, in which case they won't get included. So that is one bug that uh, we're going to just ignore for now because there's another problem that we get. What if we have a method like this? Honestly, this is a really difficult problem to solve. If you think about it yourself, how would you even go about solving this? Like, how do you, based on just seeing this simple method, 
how do you figure out what the input is going to be? Is it a string? Is it a boolean? Is it numbers? Is it a float? Is it an integer? Is it like what what is the input going to be? You have there's no way of actually figuring out what the type of input is and i genuinely like i don't know how to solve it and like i said testing it for quokka.js they don't know how to solve it either it seems maybe they're not currently working on it that much maybe it's just a simple extension that they made but it seems like it's a problem that's quite difficult to solve or i don't know if it's even possible to figure that out uh, i'm actually leaning towards the side of it maybe not being possible uh, but I'd love to be corrected, so feel free to let me know if you think that I'm way out of my depth here and this is completely solvable. I have open sourced the entire project, so or it is open source, so feel free to go there and try to figure it out because I don't know how to solve that problem. And maybe some of you guys most likely are smarter than I am, so maybe someone else could solve it if this is something that you feel like you want to see out there as an extension for Python. I think that would be really cool. I also think that this video will kind of see if there's any interest in an extension like this. But anyway, let's see where I got to in the end. So here is a comparison side by side with Quokka.js versus my extension, LowPy. So yeah, that's kind of where I ended up with it, and there's lots of problems, of course, with it. Lots of little bugs and things that could be improved and fixed, and that are that I've missed probably. Uh, but yeah, like I said, this project is on my GitHub. If you think this is a good idea, go ahead, have a look at it, and try to improve it. Uh, I'll try to keep track of it as good as I can. I just started building this literally because I got inspired and. I thought it was a good idea to build it and I just wanted to see could I even build it and it turns out I don't think it's that hard to build extensions for VS Code especially using things like ChatGPT and Copilot these things are so much more accessible today than they were a few years ago uh, so yeah I hope you got some inspiration too like that's the idea with a video like this I want you to see that it's not that hard to do it and get some inspiration maybe, get some ideas for things that you want to build and uh, hopefully you'll go out building it. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I'll see you in the next one.